The inner shadow is a fun effect. It can be used to add a slight shadow to the subject in an image or to drastically change the appearance of the time of day um, that you captured the image in. So right here, the, um, the popsicle was duplicated and a new layer was created from the background. So it was on a separate layer. And that's one thing about these layer effects, you, have, you can't do them on the background layer. Um, so this inner shadow effect uh, really created some cool effects. Yeah, I think it's kind of subtle, the change it made, but it's kind of drastic. I would say the image on the right-hand side looks much more presentable than the image on the left. Yeah. And all we did was add a slight inner shadow to it. And so if we jump over to Photoshop, um, I have that same document open. I just found this. It's not one of our stock images. I found it just by searching through Creative Commons. And the original image is, is, has a blue background. And in order to apply a, an effect, you can apply an effect to text, to a shape, you can apply it to an entire layer, or you can apply it to part of a layer. And so what I did was I moved the, I duplicated the ice pop, and I made sure that it was on its own layer, because if I apply, let's say, a drop shadow now, the drop shadow would sit on the outside of the ice pop, but if I did it on the background layer or a duplicated version of that background, the drop shadow would be outside the blue area, and that's not what we want. And so if we apply the effect, the inner shadow to it, you can see that kind of makes it look like there's clouds hanging over during the day or that the, the sun's coming from a different angle. And I think it creates a distinctly different look than the original. If I double click on inner shadow here, you can see those settings that I chose. And all I did was increase the distance and the size until I got something that looked like what I was trying to go for. And so if you move the distance, you can see that it looks like a sun is moving around your picture. Or maybe a big person is coming in to eat. <laughs> 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 that was awesome, Whitney. Okay. Okay, let's jump over. We have two more examples that we want to show you, so let's quickly jump back over to the slideshow. Okay, so here's some uh, another custom effect, um, and these are strokes, and they're interesting because they can be applied as visual interest. Like in this example, um, it helps you um, with the readability of a design, and um, it also uh, you can apply some other effects along with it. So if we jump over to Photoshop, we also have an example of this to show you. And so when you apply a stroke to an object or even a text, um, there's really kind of two approaches to it. You're applying it to grab attention, to be part of the, the illusion or the creativity of whatever you're doing. And I think this is one of those examples. But you could also apply it so that you are increasing the readability of the text that's sitting on, on, on the front of a picture maybe that you can't see all the words because the black text kind of fades in and out depending on what is in the background of the picture. And so in this example we apply it just kind of because it looks cool. But if you had a distracting background maybe you could apply a thin white stroke on the edge of black text so that you could read it better. And if we double click here you can see that when you apply a stroke it doesn't have to be a color. And so the fill type of my stroke, so right here, my stroke is a 13 point size stroke. It's positioned on the outside of the text. In general, if you're gonna put a thick stroke on, you want it to be on the outside. When you put it on the inside, weird stuff happens. Uh, if you have it hovering half on the inside, half on the outside, again, kind of weird stuff happens. And so you kind of preserve the original quality of your black text if you put it on the outside. You can adjust the blending mode, so right now it will do nothing because we don't have anything behind it, but if you wanted to blend it with whatever is behind it, you could do that. And your fill type, and this is where I think a lot of people forget, is you could make it a solid color, but you also could make it a gradient, or you could even make it a pattern, and so we just installed that. That's completely coincidental. I think that looks kind of cool. If we zoom out here. Uh, that was not on purpose. Um, but, you know, we just added that snowflake pattern, and so I could add snowflakes as my pattern and then adjust the scale until it's of my liking, and I could add what looks like snow behind the words of my text. And so maybe instead of it saying applying strokes, it might say um, winter wonderland, and then the stroke has the texture of snow in it. Okay, let's jump back over to Photoshop. We have one, not Photoshop, to our slideshow. We do have one more example. I think this is kind of the coolest one that we'll demo in this lecture. Oh, and that's, that's a really cool custom effect, and that's emboss. So a lot of these effects have been, um, I, I don't know, pretty much standalone. And, um, and here with the emboss, you can make it look like it's a real natural thing that's always been there. 
So um, you could personalize things. You could you yeah, could give a client the look. You could say, well, if you pay us X number of dollars to actually emboss your name or your logo on that bag, this is what it would look like. Instead of having to emboss a $600 leather bag and then decide that the customer doesn't like it kind of thing. And so I'm going to show you all the settings when we go over Photoshop, but I, I did screen cap them in case you want to duplicate them. And um, these are the exact settings that we use to create that effect. And there's, there's really two approaches to creating really cool effects like the emboss. You could Google it and see if someone else has the settings. And that's kind of what we did. Um, we didn't reinvent the wheel on this one. Um, the textbook that we used to use for our class, they had this example. I thought it came out really well. And so we just copied their settings. And I think that's perfectly okay if people are sharing their settings. But sometimes you want to create something that you don't know exists or nobody else has created before. And then by all means, you could kind of just plug and chug and click around until you find what you need. And so the final result you'll see is we will have a text layer that is embossed, and then there is a bevel emboss and an outer glow. There's also um, a layer blending option, but that doesn't show up on your effects um, list on your layers panel. But it, it looks pretty natural, I would say. Yeah, it looks like yeah. it, it's an embossed um, piece of text. And so the first thing we did was we found an image of... Let's jump over here. The first thing we did was we found an image or a, a Creative Commons licensed image of leather and we made sure it was facing us so we didn't have to do any um, editing to make it look like it was scaled in perspective or anything like that. But you should be able to do that at this point in the semester. You could always go to the edit menu and you could do the transform options to make it look like it's on an angle or it's, it's laying down flat on something. The second thing we did was we created a text layer and we just, it's still text, I could change this. If I decide that it should say my last name or Whitney's last name, although Whitney's last name is not gonna fit on here. <laughs> Let's get this to go back. But we could put Whitney's first name on here. Um, that fits. Uh, when you are, are creating these, the idea is non-destructive editing. And so I could quickly test this out. And so if I had lots of clients who wanted to see what their name looked like on the bag, I don't have to redo this over and over again. I would just do it once and then, you know, after Whitney's done and then Jessica wants to see what her name looks like on there, then you could easily change those out. And then the effects, they just kind of kind of flow downhill. And so they will always be there depending on, doesn't matter on, on whose name is, is typed. And so the first thing we did was we just typed our, our name or whatever we were trying to, to create. The second thing we did was we needed the text to be a color that's similar to the text in the bag or the color of the bag. And so we selected the text layer and on the character panel, this is one way to change the color of your text, we clicked on the color picker and instead of clicking around to try to find the right color, we used the eyedropper and so if you leave the color picker you get a little eyedropper and we just clicked around until we found what we felt like was a color that kind of blended in pretty well with the background. Uh, then uh, we lowered the opacity on the, the fill and the, the layer, but we did that inside layer effects. And so in order to show you the full effect of the emboss, we're going to now double click and enter the layer styles dialog box. And then I'll just go through the settings with you. We actually applied them in not this order, but I'm going to go top to bottom. We did the bevel emboss first, and then we applied the outer glow, and then we came back and applied the blending modes. But working from um, the top to the bottom of the layer style dialog box, the first thing that you can adjust is your blending mode. And this is for your whole layer. And so we made it multiply. We changed the opacity to 65, and the fill opacity to 69. You can adjust that if you don't like it. So you can increase, see, a, a, if you increase it, it almost looks like it's sticking out further. If you decrease it, it looks like it's a more shallow emboss. You can do that with the fill as well. For the bevel and emboss settings, we use an emboss with a smooth setting. The depth is 181%, the size is 10%, and the soften is 5 pixels. I'm uh, sorry, the size is 10 pixels, not percent. You can always increase that if you wanted it to be more or less, and you can make it work for your liking. I'm going to hit cancel when I leave here, so don't destroy that. And then we added an outer glow to just give it a little bit of extra-ness on the edge of the text. And we did that by using a blending mode of screen, an opacity of 35%. And we chose a color in the red family because our text had a red tint to it. 
So if we use blue, it doesn't look as good as if you use a color that's in the same kind of color family that you're using for your text. And when we were done, we ended up with a design that looks like it's embossed on a bag. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Whitney, before we wrap up this lecture on layer styles? No, that covers it. Yeah, this is kind of one of our, our smaller, I would say easier um, lessons, and so you should take that with a grain of salt, and you should be spending your time getting ahead on your projects or your exams or anything that maybe you're behind in, in the class. And so if we have an easier couple days, use that to your advantage. Very good.